letting me uh, speak in this event. I, I, I'm the lady coming from Spain, but I present uh, an international platform um, confronting issues of the engineering. It's, uh, it's called SkyGuards, and it's conformed uh, of civil society associations from uh, over 20 different European countries. First of all, I bring you the, this uh, board and the organizers and the people present our support from European civil society. Engineering is a global problem and we, the people of the world, uh, we must unite to stop this insanity. Since 1999, NATO countries have, been, uh, have uh, seen their skies systematically spread um, in the frame of climate control programs. Without people's knowledge, without people's consent, and in disregarding the legal principle of uh, precaution. We took the, the claims and concerns of European citizens to the European Parliament in a two days event last year. We let them know that civil society is not going to accept denial or silence for, a, uh, for uh, an answer. And we um, also told them that um, they are. Um, uh, they should, um, we, we made a petition for them to start an independent investigation of the facts exposed and um, in base of the proofs uh, uh, supported. In order to ban these climate control um, programs, but also in order to demand accountability to those responsible of it. And also we want democratic and parliamentary control of these military research programs. The petition has been accepted. We, are now, um, we have now to be vigilant to ensure that this is done properly. The success of this investigation in, uh, by the European Parliament will have a positive impact for us all. We hope that this chamber will also take the positive action that will go in the same direction to find out the truth. Um, because um, you are responsible to defend the common good. And what is more important for us citizens, a common good as our health and our security. So um, I just want to end up um, expressing our gratitude to this fireman fighting out there, to you for listening to us, and, and to all of you for coming to this um, event. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Our next guest, I said Maria, but it's actually Marla King, followed by Sue Eisinger. Thank you so much for the opportunity. My name is Marla King, and um, I was here in 2012, and you heard my story about coming here, wanting to raise my daughter on the land, and we sold our photos at Farmer's Market, but soon we noticed this is since uh, 2001 and following. We weren't able to do that. But today, I had to ask myself, if I was living in Germany and Auschwitz was in my neighborhood and I smelled what was going on, if it's happening to them, it's happening to me. And so I felt, in this case, it's happening to us, so it's happening. I mean, I just feel responsible to voice my concern, and I believe that you care. And I believe that you're in a position of trust today for this very reason, that you can make the awareness higher, that you can put an article in Writing Searchlight and, and acknowledge the facts. So I just thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Ms. King. Sue Eisinger, followed by Kathy Presser. Hello, Board of Supervisors. <laughs> My name is Sue Eisinger. I'm Dr. Sue and Susan Eisinger. I'm a natural healing professional. Okay. Is that better? Okay. 
um, from Corny, and I have observed chemtrails for 15 years. <coughs> Almost every day I go out and I look. I take pictures. I study it. I have taken tremendous amounts of study on the geoengineering chemtrails problem. Everything you've heard today about the scientific um, stat statistics of whatever was presented today is absolutely true. We've taken testing actual samples from the air. These have come out to be very high in aluminum oxide and barium. Aluminum, aluminum and barium are very toxic. They are actually cancer-causing. As a doctor, I can tell you this. This is a cancer-causing chemical that's being sprayed on the people at 15,000 feet. Regular jet trails are up there at 30,000. These are lower down planes and they're unmarked. Now, what does that tell you? We're being sprayed, okay? I really have, I hate to have to say this, but we're kind of powerless. We're on the local level. This is being done on some other level. I don't even know if it's our country. It could be something beyond our country, a global thing. We don't know yet. But what can we do? We, you people, you five individuals here, represent the people of this county, Shasta County. You've been duly elected. You are here to take care of us to look out for our welfare and the welfare of yourselves and your families, your health. This is such a vital issue. The air we breathe. What is more important? That's why I want you, five honorable people, as our representatives here, I want you to write up an ordinance I would like you to have discussion about it within yourselves, and I would like you to pass this ordinance, the first county in California to ban aerosol geoengineered chemtrails. <laughs> Your children, if you have any, and your grandchildren, and the ones coming later, My great -grandchildren are going to thank you from the bottom of their hearts. And I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Eisenhower. Kathy Crusher, all of our staff, closing. Good afternoon, Board Kathy Crusher. Co-owner of Pure Intent Organa Farm and mother of two of us and kids. Thank you again for seeing us today and having patience and the wherewithal to listen to all of our keynote speakers and experts. Uh, my speech was designed to be earlier to give the audience a brief history of why this item was called on the agenda today. A group of citizens met with the Air Pollution Control Board back in May and in June to discuss the geoengineering going on in our skies over Shasta County. These were actually extensions of requests and presentations Dave Wadington and the other citizens you've heard from today have made to our board back in 2008 and 2012. May's meeting of the Air Pollution Control Board was to discuss and approve the fiscal budget of $1.4 million, at which point we had requested testing of the nanoparticles and contaminants that we and Dave Wadington had addressed previously. At that point, Mr. Baugh, you had directed me to a report that Mr. Bell, uh, Ross Bell from the Air Quality District Management Division um, had prepared in 2008 and uh, we had not reviewed yet, um, and to also prepare a budget proposal for the testing that we had uh, asked and presented to your clerk. Um, at June's meeting, we basically reviewed your, uh, Mr. Bell's report a complete, and deemed it completely off topic as it was 56 pages of regurgitated information on smog and addressed particular matter of 2.5 to 10 microns. Again, we're talking about nanoparticulates. I believe the experts said that previously. 
at this point, I decided that it was also that also we maybe needed a little further education before we move further before us as a group move further with any proposed budget items. Um, so here we are today. Uh, you've now heard from the experts as their uh, fine list of credentials of state, the USDA, the military, fields of biology, neurology, chiropractors. I, I, I lost track after the first well. Um, has pretty much stated these are in fact the experts. We, you've asked us, you asked me to take an action and now I've brought forth the information and the education that you had requested. I do agree and I would say that this subject definitely needs further discussion, further testing beyond a newsletter printed off the internet. Okay? Um, if Mr. Be and if Mr. Bell needs any help with any of these uh, tests that we're requiring, I'm sure any of the fine folks that came here today, our credential experts that we brought forth, could indeed help him with, the, with, with what we've asked further. So again, thank you so much, Pam, for having the wherewithal and the, the forthright to, to, again, recognize your citizens of your community. I personally am tired of this being a fight of us against them. It's all of us. This is a global, global problem. I'm an organic farmer that weeds daily, that I don't see my vegetables. After four years of farming this land, the most perfectly and organic way I can with cover crops, bees, sunflowers, I get one cucumber this week. One! Okay? Because I plant seeds that aren't aluminum resistant. Oh, sorry, I was yelling at him here. Um, but I, because I'm an organic farmer that doesn't plant Monsanto seeds and fertilize them with the chemicals that are sold at our grocery, at our Home Depots, that now I'm suffering the consequences. It is your mandate. Yes. You have to do something about this. Thank you. Grown so much food for the nation 
that a catastrophic drought has very far-reaching ramifications. A population that has no water and cannot grow food does not tend to be in a position to effectively protest the crimes of its government. Control the food supply and you control the population. What better way to get people off their land than by drought and by fire? If you can control the weather, you can control the people. People who cannot provide for themselves must depend on their government. Many are beginning to finally look up and wake up to the fact that pro something profound is happening in our sky. Some are now finally making the decision to get involved with the fight and raise awareness of these programs. It is imperative that we all work together toward the goal of exposing the effects chemical spraying is having on people, plants, animals, and our water and food supply. No one is immune to the consequences, so we can't close our eyes any longer because it, that is not an option. Thank you, Ms. Proposal. Thank you. Laura Rose, all of our Jews, and me. And then before you begin, Ms. Rose, could I get a couple of people that are maybe in the back to ask the people in the hallway to bring down the conversation level? It's beginning to get loud enough that I'm having a hard time concentrating on the conversation of hearing. I'm sure other people are having that difficulty as well. There are chairs up here. Please, please come in and have a seat. That would be great. Thank you, Ms. Rose, for your patience. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to be here. I came out from the Texas Panhandle, 90 miles north of Amarillo. Um, we've got some alarming rates of skin cancer in Amarillo. Uh, I'm a farmer, rancher. We have wheat, uh, corn, milo, cotton. We have a grotto that comes out and does soil sampling once a month, and we're finding high levels of aluminum in the area. Our crops are being burned, uh, and we're insured. So then we claim the insurance, and they pay us, and it's a vicious cycle. Uh, my question is, um, I asked Dane about this, can the insurance agencies Sue whoever's doing this because it's causing a big vicious circle. Um, I noticed that while I'm out there, uh, when I go barefoot outside, immediately the soil it just eats my skin away and my grandson's skin away. And I noticed that my grandson is having nosebleeds now. And he's having repeated illnesses, and he's a very healthy, active, normal two-year-old boy, but he's coming down with. Um, illnesses that they treat with sulfamides. And I've read that sulfamides, natural sulfamides, are what helps you against this aluminum. Um, I'm noticing a high rate of MISA, which is similar to MRSA, um, in our cattle. So our cattle are affected by this. I've noticed uh, people with high rates. My husband is in the soil, working on one of the tractors. He's got a very small cut. Um, it becomes a, a, a bad MRSA, MISA infection. He almost lost his arm. This is happening with a lot of our uh, ranchers out there. And I can't get anybody to believe me. They kind of think I'm a lunatic, like this whole geoengineering thing is some theory. And it's not a theory because it's happening to us out there just as well as it is here. It's a big problem. And a lot of people are affected. A lot of cancers. I just pulled up a study that 45% of men are, have, are getting cancer, 33% of women, and these rates are alarming. There's something going on, and we need, I don't know who's doing it, the elite, uh, the government, I'm not sure. But something needs to be addressed, and we need to save our planet. This is happening all over the world. And, uh, please listen to the people. And, Maybe this is the grassroots right here in Shasta County that can get this ball rolling. Yes. So thank you, everybody, for listening to me. And that I'm not really crazy. Welcome. My name is Janice Mahini, and I just want to say that the stage is set and the conditions are perfect. The bully fire that's already scorched 
according to the fire advice this morning, 6,000 acres plus is only the first one this summer. Fire is a primary method being used to rid the state of California of its human inhabitants and to destroy what remains of California's ability to grow food for ourselves and the rest of the country. It's been very well documented that the current drought plaguing California has been engineered by spraying hundreds of tons of nano aluminum into the atmosphere, coupled with the use of atmospheric ionic heaters, known as HART, to create high pressure zones over the state <coughs> while migrating the moisture that would normally fall in our state to air other areas east of California. Adding to the fire danger are the metallic dust particles that are constantly settling out of the atmosphere, coating our forest foliage. These microscopic particles are incendiaries, pushing the potential for catastrophic fires even higher. Why would they spray our state with highly incendiary substances like aluminum? It's perfect for creating hotter fires that burn out of control for a much longer period. Combined with the huge fuel loads that exist due to the restrictions on our logging industry, clearing and, clear, clearing and cleaning out the debris left from other wildfires, they don't allow us to do that either. These conditions can create the perfect storm. This is also a major factor in the decline and demise of forest around the globe. Sick and dying trees, drought, a flammable coating, and not only do the fires burn, but they burn harder than ever, sterilizing the soil and rendering it infertile for, for decades. Is it just a coincidence that these pre programs are being deployed in an effort to deprive, to deprive California of water, while at the same time, Agenda 21 states that it's the goal to rewild America? It is not a question of if, but when, our wildfires happen. What better way to get rid of the people out of the forest and into the cities by fire? And just one other thing I'd like to say. If you saw the news this morning about that Arctic vortex that has come down in the middle of our country, it's never happened before with temperatures dropping to 10 below zero, five below zero, and and all of the out of control um, flooding that's going on in the east, that's not all by accident. Thank you, Ms. Panini. Mary Smoots, followed by Nancy Shaw. Good morning, my name is Mary Slutz. I'm a resident of uh, Reading. I've been here 26 years. Welcome. Um, to the board, I'd like to address one thing. It's a very small portion of what's being presented, and I'm going to be followed by a couple people from the medical field. But geoengineering with health effects. What follows is a fairly exhaustive list of symptoms associated with chemtrail spraying. Each symptom has been identified by various individuals who have clocked their occurrence with the onset of a chemical spraying being laid down over their homes and their businesses. This list has been organized in a descending order with the most commonly expressed, ex experienced symptoms at the top. Each of these symptoms is frequently occurring in the areas around the world where chemical spraying is now a fact. At the very top of the list is headaches. At the very bottom of the list is anger, rage, and frustration. I will quickly go through the list. My time is just a few seconds here. Disorientation, difficulty paying attention. Sinusitis, skin discomfort, irritation, joint pain, asthmatic, breathing difficulties, dizziness, and insomnia, lack of sleep, memory loss, eye problems, eyes are blurred or fuzzy vision, nausea, liver problems, gallbladder dysfunction, tetanitis, neck back pain, scratchy throat. Scratchy throat is noticed when you're trying to talk and you keep clearing your throat. Allergy symptoms or hay fever occurring out of season, not when there's any pollen. Flu-like symptoms, susceptibility to colds. Easily catching colds over a short period of time, one cold after another. A general weakness, anxiety, depression. 
coughing without due cause, sneezing, and shortness of breath, vertigo while standing and walking, which the doctors blame on your medication. And the last one is anger, rage, and frustration. I thank you for listening to us today. Thank you, Ms. Lou. Ms. Shaw, followed by Cooper. Hi. Um, before I say too much, I'd like to thank you for listening. And um, i just like to dedicate my little spiel here to Alan Alexander in San Luis Obispo area, who just died four weeks ago from melanoma and loved my good friend, his wife, and their three children. He was pretty young and uh, he served in uh, the National Guard and went to Iraq several times. Um, so my name is Nancy Shaw and um, why, how did I get here? I'm supposed to be in Zion, Utah. <laughs> I'm supposed to, I have my two teenagers with me. We were going to take a road trip to, uh, out that way from San Luis Obispo. But then I knew this was happening, and it just kept calling me to come here. I've been watching these um, chemtrails and reading the studies for many, many years. And so this is that important to me, that my girls are reading in the hotel for me. They're teenagers, once 18. So, um, but anyway, um, so I'm a registered nurse. I've been with, since 1985. I've worked at quite a few hospitals. Um, I have seen a huge change in not only my friends, neighbors, uh, personal health, but um, nurses, co-workers. Um, I have five nurse friends right now who all have cancer. I lost my beautiful nine-year-old niece 13 years ago last week to leukemia. They did live near a Monsanto plant for some time. Um, so many people have health problems. The um, nurses that I know are complaining of being forgetful. I know I'm more forgetful than I used to be. I have a very high IQ, but you don't always know it, especially these days. Um, <laughs> and these um, nurses are complaining of being forgetful. They have flu, colds. Um, all sorts of problems. I years ago I started having. Um, I had three months where every month I had a fever for a week, and this was after extremely heavy spray. I was out with my dog. I was out a lot hiking. I had a break. It was the shift I was working, and I got, finally got tested. I thought something horrible was wrong with me. Well, I found out I had low vitamin D levels. Why would I have such a low vitamin D level, which can cause you know, Im immune problems as well as cancer? Well, when we're being sprayed constantly with aluminum and barium, you know, the ray sun's rays are deflected um, to a degree, and we don't get as much vitamin D. Um, quickly, I did speak to the San Luis Obispo Air Pollution Quality Board. So that was your notice to conclude that, mm -hmm. And they, um, they said that they don't, they don't test for anything or from planes, which is crazy. Um, you have a chance to be heroes. You have a chance to start things rolling, as they say. I, I really hope you will do this and um, stop it here so other counties will follow you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Chair Carla Kruger, followed by Bernie Smith. Erna Smith. And before you start, Ms. Kruger, uh, just as a notice, I'm sorry, Kruger's not here? Okay, so uh, before you start, Ms. Smith, hold the phone for a second. Uh, to speak to the rest of the board, we, we have gone for three hours and have no hygiene or health break. Uh, I have a request for one, and I, I believe that we're going to go ahead and after this uh, speaker, Ms. Smith, we'll go ahead and take a 30-minute break and come back. There are at least another hour uh, just to notify you of uh, folks that have requested to speak today, so we will continue to conclude and be able to take the time with uh, their faculties <laughs> and uh, be able to pay, uh, pay attention to the speaker. So, Ms. Smith, if you would go ahead and then we're going to take a 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Please. 
and you're squirming to me to go, I would really want your attention. I have three minutes to say something. I've heard Would you please address the board? I'm please. sorry. I, I've heard every word from these people. I thank each of you. I thank each of you. I sent you letters in advance, thank you for your time, appealing to you to listen and then to do something. All of the things that have been spoken about can be answered with HR 2977. Senator Dennis Kucinich in 2001, the 107th Congress tried to have a bill passed. It only made it through the first stage of introduction. It was not passed, but in that bill under Section 7B, you will find that chemtrails is used. It is not a made up word or a uh, hick word or any of that. It is a word used that is in a document in our Congress that he brought forward. The chemtrail is known as an exotic weapons system. It has a purpose. Its purpose is being used today and all the effects you've heard today is the effects that this chemtrail exotic weapon system is capable of and is doing. It is built with the design to, and you can look this all up, all of you, I beg you to, the design of that was made to destroy and to damage, to destroy the upper atmosphere, to damage and destroy the ionosphere, the climate, the weather. It is destroying all of us. And so I don't care. You know, I've heard a lot of people with letters behind their name, and I have the greatest respect. I have respect for all of you, all of you out there. My letters are AKA Grandma. Grandma, the most precious words to my ears. I have 10 grandchildren. All of them have asthma. All of them. I talk to a lung specialist, my lung specialist. I do not smoke, any of that. He said, Verna, I do not know why. It's epidemic, though. You can now get an inhaler sold over the counter. And it's the cool thing at school. I hear from my grandson, oh, Grandma, you can get them all sorts of colors. This is ridiculous. It is sad. I seen my grandson go into the hospital five times in one year with asthma attacks. My daughter is a well-trained registered nurse, and she's saying, Mama, I don't know what to do. And I have tried to share with my own children. But you see, I don't have the letters other than they gave me mom and grandma. But they love me and they value me. It's what we are called to do. Servitude is the greatest calling there can be. You're paid to serve. We are to serve one another out of mutual respect, mutual concern, and mutual genuine love. Bottom line, treating your neighbor as you want to be treated goes beyond a credential, goes beyond if you're a doctor, a biologist, or whatever. You are a human being that requires the very same things as grandma does. I you. want to be around for my grandchildren. I appeal to you, please, do not let this fall on deaf ears. If you do in your job profession, I can guarantee you won't when it comes home to your family and to you. Thank because you, you won't be able to do that. And we would also say that grandma is a great designation. Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So before we take a 30-minute break, I'm going to Supervisor Modi to read the next two names that we'll be hearing at the conclusion of that break when we return, so that you'll know your first up. Uh, Katrina Noble and Kimberly Steele. Very good. So, Ms. Nolan and Steele will be the first two up after our break. Thank you. We are at recess. Thank you.